Hagen. We're in James Orr, Sidelights on Christian Doctrine, his chapter on the Spirit in Salvation. He's taking up the subject of faith and repentance. By faith we are united with Christ on the human side, and it has been seen how faith springs up in the soul and is an act of the whole nature, quickened by the Holy Spirit. Faith is not a mere act of the understanding, or mere act of the will, or mere act of the affections. It is the laying hold of Christ with the whole self, mind, will, heart, as the gospel presents him to us, and the cleaving to him for all the ends of his salvation. It is this consent of the will, as the older theologians described it, to the assent of the understanding, with the resulting surrender of heart and life to Christ as Savior and Lord, which constitutes saving faith. In using this expression, it is not meant as if there could be any genuine faith in God which was not saving, but the gospel being the, that revelation of God in which peculiarly his saving will is set forth, and Jesus Christ in his person, death and resurrection, being the center and substance of that revelation, he is, in the nature of the case, the particular object of faith in relation to salvation. It is in faith that the bond is constituted between him and the soul which affects salvation. This is God's command, accordingly, that we believe on him whom he hath sent, John 6, verse 29, and 1 John 3, 23. It will be observed, however, that with faith in Scripture is generally comprised another grace, and that is repentance, as a condition of salvation. And the question has often been raised as to the relation of these graces, in particular as to which has the priority. Testifying, says Paul, both to Jews and to Greeks, repentance toward and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. That's Acts 20, verse 21. Does repentance then precede faith, as these words might seem to imply, or does faith precede repentance? The true answer to this question is that the acts distinguished by these terms are really inseparable and spring from the same state of soul, of which they are little more than different poles or aspects. Repentance is a turning from sin to God. Faith is a turning to God in Christ for salvation. And it would be as, un as reasonable to ask, in the case of a man turning from east to west, whether his turning from the east or his turning to the west came first, as to ask whether repentance precedes faith or faith repentance. This will appear at once when the relations of faith and repentance are more closely considered. Is it not, on the one hand, the case that there can be no true repentance toward God which has not a germ of faith in it, not only of faith in God himself, but a germ of faith, of hope, in the mercy of God. You cannot call men to turn to God in repentance unless there is mercy for them to turn to. And it has already been seen that it needs faith in this mercy to draw men to God. Westminster Assembly's answer on repentance in its catechism brings this out very beautifully. It describes repentance as a saving grace, whereby a sinner, out of a true sense of his sin, an apprehension of the mercy of God in Christ, doth with grief and hatred of his sin turn from it unto God with full purpose of and endeavor after new obedience. And that's the end of the quote from the Westminster Confession. On the other hand, it is, is it not as true that there can be no real faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ, no genuine saving faith, which does not spring from a heart broken and contrite on account of its sin? Faith, in short, takes us up just where repentance leaves us. Repentance leaves us at the footstool of the divine mercy, confessing our sins, acknowledging the justice of God's condemnation of them, and imploring his forgiveness. Faith points us to him through whom forgiveness and salvation come. The two states, therefore, are inseparable. There is a sorrow of the world which worketh death, according to 2 Corinthians 7, verse 10. But this is not evangelical repentance, the godly sorrow which worketh repentance unto salvation. There is a faith which, which trembles at God's word. The demons also believe and shudder, according to James 2, 19. 
but it is not the obedience of faith that is Romans 16:26 which springs from a truly penitent heart and is fruitful in every good work according to Galatians 5 verse 6 and James 2 verse 18 I'm putting on a link to a video we did on faith and fear. What is the character of pagan religion? And this is where biblical faith is set apart from all other religions that we tend to call faiths. Most religion, unfortunately, is generated by fear or superstition. So that link's on your screen. Next time, faith and justification.